Bonjour, in this episode we add the mist over the lake. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sodra Amélie. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And I'm still traveling through the US. I'm here at, actually at Photoshop World. And as I told you in my last episode, because of Photoshop World, I'm giving 40% on my entire shop that you can get until the 15th of April. Also, if you want to get the raw files for what we're going to be doing, just click here and you will get access to this page where there is hundreds and hundreds of raw files from all over the world. Also, if you want to get this tutorial for free every week and twice a week, actually, all you have to do is click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, as I said last week, we spent a bit of time assembling and merging a panorama and giving it a double processing to give it a look. This week, we're going to add the mist. That's the final result that we are going for. So, let me show you how we add this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. A couple of things before we get started. I just want to announce that I have a big sale coming for Photoshop World. And it's 40% off everything until the 15th of April. And you have to put in the code April 15 PSW 2014. PSW means Photoshop World. This is where I am in Atlanta. And so all you have to do is go to my tutorials. And if there's any course you want to have or presets, whatever you want, you can just click on the direct download and you can enter this code, uh, for example, here. And on any products except the complete package, on the complete package, you, the lowest you can go is $340. But if you enter the code here, which would be then April 15 PSW 2014, and you click update cart, it's going to give you 40% on anything. So that goes until the 15th of April. And, uh, and voila, you see, you got uh, $27 discount, $10.80, 80, so you only pay $16.20 for that preset. Last but not least, if you ever wanted to have a great portfolio, uh, one of my sponsors is Squarespace, but the reason they are sponsoring me is that I am truly using their technology for my portfolio. If you click here on portfolio, you come to this website, it's called sergeamelyphotos.com, and this is really what I use for my portfolio. They have amazing templates, which I really love. And if you click on news here and you go to Squarespace on my website, you will see a little uh, 15 minutes tutorial where I show you how to create your, your own website with Squarespace. And they even provide you for the price with uh, the name name. And uh, I show you everything there. And if you click here to get started, you will get 10% on the first year because you sign up through me and it helps support my podcast. So thank you very much for that. And let's get to the tutorial. So on the tutorial, if you remember last week, what we did is we did a double processing. We first started off, retouch one photo. We synchronized the retouching on all the photos, went to Photoshop to create the panorama, went back into Lightroom and did a second editing. Now that's very important because now if I right click edit and edit Adobe Photoshop CC, you want to make sure that you, you don't edit original because if you edit original, you lose all the double processing. You want to go to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustment. This is going to create a new TIFF file with the double processing that has been done. So that's very important. And now out of nowhere in Photoshop, mesdames et messieurs, we are going to create some mist, some little morning fog. We're going to cheat and that's what Photoshop is for, is to cheat, right? So first thing first, it's pretty uh, simple process. Um, first thing is we create here. So once we have the empty layer, I'm going to call this, uh, we're going to call this fog or mist. All right. So first thing first, we're going to go to filter, uh, render clouds. And oh, one step I forgot to show you is you have to make sure that your white is the foreground color and black is the background color. If it's not, you have to press the D key for default and then the X key to put the white as a foreground color. So D for black, black is going to be the foreground color and white the background color. D for default and then X to get the white color. Now it's not really important for that one step, but for what we're going to be doing, it is important. So once you've got that fog, you put this in screen mode. And what screen mode is going to do is that you see anything which is black is going to become transparent. Anything which is white is going to become not transparent. So we start seeing the fog. I mean, it looks kind of weird, but we start seeing it. Next, you're going to go to filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur. And that's what's just going to make a blur. And I usually do, do around f between 40 and 50, depending on the resolution of your photo. You got to give it a try, but I'm going to go for 44. Click on OK. Then I'm going to, with the uh, zoom tool, pressing Z for zoom tool, pressing Alt to unzoom. I'm going to look from very far away the photo. And then I'm going to press the most used Photoshop shortcut of all time, Command T or Control T. That is the free transform. It's really something that any Photoshop user use a lot. Okay, Command T, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to a perspective. On perspective, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the right corner and click it to the right. That's going to give like a little perspective to this. Then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go to distort. And now with distort, I can take this middle thing and get it just above my horizontal line above the lake, something like this. All right, then I'm going to press enter. So that's my basic mist. It looks amazingly real, doesn't it? I'm just kidding. So now I'm going to create a mask. I want all this to be masked out and I just want to bring a little bit of it. So I'm going to press the alt key or the option key on my keyboard and click here on creating a mask. That's going to create a black mask. The result of a black mask is that anything which is on that layer fog does is not disappear. But if I have, oh, that went away again. If I have white as my foreground color and I press B for brush, Okay, and then I'm going to make sure that I use uh, a rounded, very, you know, uh, zero harness, you know, big, a nice size brush. Now make sure that flow, yeah, flow and opacity is around 30%. So that when you brush, I'm not going to brush pure white, I'm going to brush just a bit of gray. I'm just bringing back as I brush the fog. Okay, usually there is a bit more in the background. Okay, I'm going to avoid the trees a little bit. So make, and if you want to make your brush bigger or smaller, you just press the option or alt and control key. And that's, and, and you click, your left mouse click and you hold and it's going to make your mouse bigger or smaller. I'm just going to add some fog here, fog there. Now you can add some on the trees, you know, like I can lower the opacity even more. Just add a little bit here on the trees, but not so much. You know, you want to be gentle here because we want to give the illusion that the fog is going behind the trees. So, all right, so boom, 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 you know, 27%. I'm just adding a bit of fog here. We are fogging the fog. Okay, it's a lot cheaper than using a fog machine. Because if you have to use a fog machine to take that one photo and put fog all over the lake, believe me, that's going to be a very expensive photo. Okay, so now that's sort of like a basic fog. Let's look at it. It's already looking quite of cool before, after. If you think it's a bit too strong and a bit lower the opacity, it's gonna make it even more real. But I usually do that at the end. So that's my basic fog, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is press Command J to duplicate the layer that we just did here. And then I'm gonna press Command T again, the famous Command T uh, to free transform. So, and I'm just gonna make this a bit tighter somewhere around here because the top of the fog far away it kind of always looks like that but you can see it's too um, it's too neat so I need to make a better mask I'm gonna click on the mask and this is where it's important that white is the foreground you click on the gradient tool and on the gradient tool you make sure that you have the first one which is foreground to background click on OK and make sure instead of having the linear gradient that you have the one, two, three, fourth one, um, which is called the reflected gradient. The way the reflected gradient works is that if I draw, I'm gonna press shift to make a very straight gradient. If I draw just a very little line, what it's gonna do, I show you on a mask, by clicking Alt, I can show you the mask. It's gonna make a, everything black above what I uh, drew. Uh, underneath what I drew, everything's going to be black and in between is going to make a very nice gradient. So it's perfect. It's just going to make like the top of the fog appear, you know, kind of cool. Now, the problem is that we have to take that out. So take the B for the brush back. Make sure that black is your foreground crawler because now when you press black and you just erase little by little that line on the on the tree there so that it's it's still behind there. So now it starts 
to be foggy. Oh, on the tree there. That looks very unreal. So we still have the black brush. You know, I mean, fog goes everywhere. So it's, but you know, let's make it a bit real. Uh, let's be real, guys. You know, come on. Okay. So this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. And so usually I lower even more the opacity. I just want a little line here. And what I usually do is I duplicate it, press V and just make one just a little bit under maybe, and maybe even lower even more the opacity of the second one, something like that. Okay, now to add even more dimension to my fog, I'm gonna create, well, I'm gonna go back on this layer, press B and make sure it's not on the tree. Okay, that's cool. Then I'm gonna create a new mask again a new layer, I'm sorry, that I'm gonna call Fog 2, the return of the fog. Okay, and on this fog, I'm gonna take B for brush, make sure white is the forward color, make sure your opacity is pretty low, like 23, and your flow 23, you want fog is, you know, very foggy. And now it's gonna get it a bit more complicated, but really quickly, we're gonna go into the brush engine, and I'm gonna use the brush number 14, 14, if you don't see it, it's um, what's well, a brush that's good for making fog. It, if you don't have it, you can just click here, click to reset all locked settings, and it's usually going to put back that uh, thing. Okay, so but we have to do a few things before it looks like fog. So first thing first, uh, I'm going to make a big size. Second thing, I'm going to make spacing around 50. What spacing is doing is that now it starts to look like a fog a little bit. You see. And then I'm going to go to Shape Dynamics. And Shape Dynamics, I'm going to make sure that my angle jitter is at 100%. What that does is that every stroke is going to have a different angle, okay? Um, then I'm going to go to Size, maybe Jitter a little bit. And Transfer, I like Transfer. What Transfer does is that every brush stroke does not have the same opacity. So I'm going to use the Opacity Jitter. You see, if you, uh, maybe put it around 20 or 30. So I repeat, on brush tip shade 14, size make it very big, you know, depending on the resolution of your photo. Spacing around 50, yeah, something like that, doesn't really matter. Not like this, for sure. It's gonna be spaced out, like something like that. Shape dynamics, make sure angle jitter is 100% angle jitter is gonna make every brush stroke turn have a different angle, right? And then transfer is gonna make uh, around opacity jitter around 26, it's gonna make all the brush you know, a very um, different opacity. Every brush stroke is gonna be different. Okay, so we can get that away. And now let's create some brush. So I'm gonna make it a bit big, like this, like 432 pixels, and I'm brushing. So, but you can hardly see anything. The reason you can hardly see anything is I have 23 opacity and 23 flow. That's like very low. So I'm building the, the fog, but that's how a fog should be. You know, it should really go gentle because it can go really bad. Now, Okay, all right, so check it out, before, after, I'm just adding fog, okay, maybe let's boost up a bit the flow and a bit the density, maybe I was a bit cheap on this one, you know, all right, oh, no, that's too much, Pumsy, I'm going to undo it, no, you just have to take the time, you know, you have to build it up, you know, because if it's too much, it's too much, and uh, we don't want too much, we want to, to do as much realistic fog as possible. Okay, all right, and uh, so then you can zoom out a little bit. It's always good to sort of zoom out, you know, go take a coffee and come back and see if it's too much. So that's the before, that's the after. I'm maybe gonna lower the opacity so that it makes, makes us better. And you know, in true life, fog would, would not be like just even like this one, you know, it would like stick out sometimes, you know, there would be little clouds here and there. So last but not least, on that fog to the return uh, layers, you take this tool, the smudge tool, make sure it's at mode normal strength 50%. And I don't know if you can tell that on the video, but I'm just basically, oh, make sure it's also uh, not sample all, all layers. We just want to do it on that one layer. And all I'm doing is getting some little sort of flame of smoke coming out of the lake, but very subtle, very, very subtle. Uh, you know, and uh, I don't think you can even see it on the video because I can hardly see it, but I know it's there. I know it's hidden. I know it's there. And um, yeah, I can tell, I can see it a little bit. I don't think you will see very much on the video, but 
when you look at this on a very high resolution photo, believe me, it makes a difference. I'm just giving you a few strokes. Okay, now I really think this is really looking a bit unrealistic here, but that's why I'm going to correct that a bit later. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Once you're finished, if you want to really see the before and after, what you can do is uh, select all four layers by pressing the Shift key, right click, and um, where is it? Oh no, it's not there. Oh yeah, group from layers. And that's going to create a, a new group from these selected layers that we're going to call fog. Fog, all right. And so that's before the fog, after the fog, before, after, before, after. And if you think it's too strong, you can lower the opacity of the entire group and make it a lot more subtle. A lot more subtle and it is a lot more better, if you see what I mean. So honestly, the best way is to start at zero, you know, get used to that photo and then go to, this is something that I learned today. If you go at 100% and then you go, you know, you have an effect and you go from 100% down to zero, you're going to stop very soon. But if you go the other way around, if you totally get your, your effect totally out of the picture, you get your eyes used to this, and then you move your opacity a bit to the right, a bit to the right, the whole group, until you have something that you like. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I'm a 94%. So, okay. But it, anyway, it's, it's a good way to do that. And if you think that line is too strong, well, you, have, you can just click, see where it is. It's probably this line. You know, you can just click on this, on the mask here. Make sure black is the foreground color. Make sure you have a brush. You can even use the same foggy brush. Make sure your flow and density is pretty low. And just, you know, brush with black on this one and on this one to make that line a little bit more less present, you know. So it's kind of like more natural. But you know, you always have this sort of little line like this, you know, I kind of like the result, you know, let me show you before the group, before, after. So we added fog. And um, just to show you that this kind of, uh, uh, two things first. Well, actually just one thing, I actually was inspired and kind of stole all of the tutorial from uh, Digital Camera World. They had this, uh, it was not a video, it was like a step-by-step -step tutorial. And um, I actually got, I didn't exactly follow the same steps, but it's the whole idea. And I will actually give the link of that, um, of that tutorial in the video if you want to see a, you know, like a written version of it. But I sort of did my own thing about it. I didn't follow exactly their tutorial, but I got inspired. So, you know, giving credit to the true source of the material. Okay, guys, hope you like this and let's get back to me. All right, mesdames and messieurs, I hope you like this tutorial. And I hope you will take advantage of the 40% on my store. And I will see you in the next episode. Au revoir.